Right. Good afternoon. Um, does my time start now? Okay. So um, I have to say, except for my undergraduate in physics when I dabbled with the 6502 integer programming language and a little bit of uh, COBOL, which that makes me obsolete, I am not a techie, okay? Uh, my head of engineering is, I'm an economist. My job is to design systems, especially economic systems. My job is to design markets and ecosystems. That's my job. Economic and business model, that's my job. How you make money, that's my job. And how on earth do you make money from personal data? That's my life career, all right? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the hat story, and this story is actually talking about a multi-sided market for personal data. For some of you who have been hearing this for the last three years, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we finally reached launch and we're retelling the story in a very different way. So let me tell you the hat story because the whole point of this slide deck is to win hearts and minds and to tell you how we intend to win this through hearts and minds. So I would like to start the story with a metaphor on the internet. So there was this land called the internet. It was a good land. It allowed people to walk everywhere, visit friends, do all sorts of really cool things. We were able to do so much. We booked services, educated ourselves, connected devices, got our boyfriends and girlfriends, read news. But the only problem was this land was very, almost all the time, muddy. And the muddiness of this land made shoes, which I called personal data, stick to the mud. In fact, in some cases, the shoes were completely ripped off. It was just, you know, you just had to deal with all that mud. It's just mud, mud everywhere. Academic practitioners, policy makers, we came from far and wide to discuss what to do with this mud. Some suggested different shoe materials, and some suggested different shoes. Even if the land helped us do more, we actually have less freedom. And it's not just because of the mud. The internet dictates the terms of engagement because we cannot be on this land without a platform, whether it's email or Facebook or Instagram. And all existing platforms are controlled by organizations. They can't help it, hence the mud. They never intended the land to be all this muddy. It, it just was. And because we like this land, this is good land, we have to deal with the mud. It was mud or nothing. In comparison, we have many more freedoms in physical lives. We can interact, exchange, go to the park, bring a dog for a walk. Does not require a platform rule or a platform script. In physical lives, we subscribe to goods and services, maybe some of them from government, maybe some of them from corporations. But most time, we provide ourselves with goods and services. We cook, we wash dishes, we exercise, we read. And the reason for that is because in physical life, we have a freedom of property. By owning stuff, we are free to use it to make our lives better without being constrained by platform and its rules. But not on the internet. On the internet, the platform dictates the terms of engagement. It's how we interact on Facebook, how we use Instagram, all of that. Why is it we cannot have more freedom to do digital stuff ourselves? Because we don't have our own platform. It's, and instead of someone building for us, it's really a lot easier to build services on existing platforms. Yes the muddy kind of services. And so nothing is free, so firms either take your money or take your data on these platforms. And it's good business, so it's really better not to change anything. Why are we surprised we are in a mud crisis? 
why don't we ask the real question? Why can't we have a different kind of, of surface? One that doesn't make shoes stick. Maybe, maybe it could be a different platform. One that's owned by us. As long as we do not have our own platforms, we can only get onto the internet with these platforms. We do not have the right to dictate the terms of engagement. I cannot say this often enough. Without a platform, we also don't have private space on the internet where we can have information processing system. And because we're individuals, a platform for us isn't easy. We're not corporations. Our supply chains are not the same. Our inventory are my clothes and my food. Lifestyles require a different way of organizing data and information. Building a platform for an individual is hard. For example, we can't search our entire history for our data to learn more about ourselves, our health, our well-being. We can't match what we have with what we buy. We don't have a proper database of our digital lives. We don't even have our own data most times. In short, unlike the physical world, we do not have the freedom of property. The internet privileges corporations not because they are bad, they're good guys. They're just trying to give you a service. But they've been around for more than 20 years. They've integrated seamlessly their supply chains, their inventory, and their information systems. We, we've got the smartphone. That's about it. So how do we get more freedom for the individual on the internet? We need a personal data platform for ourselves, owned by us, private to us, the way all corporations currently have, to own some digital property, to make use of ourselves, interacting with corporations on the internet, start having tools and means to do things for one another without having another platform, rebalance the internet so maybe that's a little bit more individual-centric as well as corporation-centric, a better surface. Instead of constantly talking about privacy and battling on existing platforms, instead of just tackling the mud, the future of Internet of Things is upon us. Procter & Gamble, Unilever, Coca-Cola, Samsung, well, maybe not Samsung, but all the real world stuff haven't yet got a platform. We have one chance. Just as the Internet jumps out of the box, to rebuild different kinds of platforms. Start having choices to create new platforms for ourselves. But what we, if we really did build it, how would it look like? What should we call it? Maybe we should call it the hat. Maybe we should call it the hub of all things because people are at the hub of all things. What if we gave the hat the ability to store personal data in a private space on the internet? Maybe you start to accumulate inventory and data repository. What if we gave you the right to acquire your own data on the internet into your hat? Maybe you'll start asking for some of your data back. Or give corporations choices in terms of your, the way your personal data is being synchronized on their servers. What if we gave individuals something so easy, like a hyperdata browser, browse their data, create mashups, redistribute, organize, and control their hats? Maybe then they have a power to process information the way it can be easy for them. What if we gave them a platform to buy services to use, visualize, and services that will augment their ability, help with decision-making, computation, and what if we gave individuals the ability to exchange their content and data straight from their own AP hat through APIs? They will begin to have different interactions and relationships with corporations. And what if we gave it all away? Open source it, just give it all away. You know, give away the code, give away the hyperdata browser code, give everything away. Maybe we'll create competition on who will build it better and have choices or hat providers for everyone. 
And what if we design and created an entire ecosystem of a market system of public and private system services? Why don't we try all over again rebuilding the internet? Then we may give individuals the freedom of their own digital property and perhaps really change the internet. After three years, six university, 1.7 million pounds, lots of money, startups, entrepreneurs, we came together. You can go to it. It's hubofallthings.com. Um, there's the charity that basically regulates the ecosystem, and there's the startup that operates the system. We also went on Indiegogo and asked people, did you think like us? And then uh, quite about three, 400 people said yes and gave us 54,000 pounds. And we built the Hyperdata browser, a private space. You can go to rumple.hubofallthings.com. You need a hat to log in. In the future, when technology evolves, what happens to your own history and data? You can't buy that. You can buy a Siri in future, you can buy robots in the future, but you can't buy your own data repository. So we start now, and we also then think about what about how we interact with people online? Let's try to create a public space, and you can go to marketsquare.hubofallthings.com. And this is if you currently go to my hat page, which is hatcentral.hubofallthings.net, which is, doesn't look right now, the new interface should look like this. And if you give you, you will have your personal hat address, a front page for your hat. And for those who are techie, you can go and read how we're deploying hat into containers, um, containerized hat, a full stack hat, a container for every hat. Finally, we get our own personal space. We get some data. We have our own analytics processing spaces. We can create nudges and we can create prompts. The internet is starting to look a little bit more balanced now. And this is also good for the whole economy because you can start building stuff that are individually centric. And we hope that will be a lot more democratic and more equitable future. Because the real interest is not in the World Wide Web. It's in the self-wide web, together with the world wide web. We have to make the internet more complete. So please, join us and get your own hat. Thank you. <laughs>